In this video, we're going to explain how Kafka actually works. So Apache Kafka is an open source distributed event streaming platform used for building real time data pipelines and streaming apps. In regular speak, this means it's a system designed to handle large amounts of data quickly and efficiently, allowing you to process and react to information as it happens in real time. The core concepts of Kafka include producers. So producers are applications or services that send data messages to Kafka. They publish messages to specific topics within the Kafka cluster. A Kafka cluster is a group of one or more servers working together. Each server is called a broker and brokers are responsible for receiving messages from producers, storing them safely and serving them to consumers. Kafka organizes messages into topics which are like categories or channels. For example, I think you could have a topic for website clicks. Each topic is then split into both multiple partitions to distribute the data across brokers, allowing for scalability and parallel processing. So again, if you look at website clicks, you could have millions of those every second. And so scaling that is important. And that is where topic partitions are really important. Consumers are services that read and process messages from Kafka topics. They subscribe to the topic they are interested in and consume messages at their own pace. Consumer groups allow multiple consumers to coordinate and share their workload, ensuring that each message is processed by only one consumer within the group. Group. Each message within a partition is assigned a unique offset, which is a sequential number that identifies its position in the partition. Offsets help consumers keep track of which messages they have already processed. Some of the core mechanics of Kafka include its message storage. So Kafka stores each message durably on disk and allows consumers to read them at their own page. This decouples the production of data from its consumption and replication. So for full tolerance, Kafka replicates data across multiple brokers. Each partition has one leader and zero or more followers. If a leader fails, a follower automatically takes over. So let's look at a real world example. So imagine there's a popular website where every user click is a valuable piece of data. Producers in this case, they will be web servers. So they would capture each click event and send it to a Kafka topic called website clicks. These messages include information like user ID, timestamp and clicked item. The Kafka broker will receive these messages and append them to the end of the appropriate partitions log within the topic. The click events are stored in the order they are arrived within each partition of the website clicks topic. Kafka keeps these messages based on a configurable retention policy, which could be a certain amount of time or disk space. And this means that the data is available for consumers to read and reread as needed, enabling features like reprocessing and historical analysis. So consumers such as real-time analytics subscribe to the website clicks topics and they read the click events sequentially from the assigned partitions using offsets to track their progress. And by committing these offsets, each consumer ensures that they know exactly which messages they process, allowing them to pick up right where they left off in case of a restart. So Kafka is used in many production systems in massive companies. So for example, Netflix uses Kafka to process and stream real-time data for features like user activity tracking, recommendations, and operational monitoring. Uber also utilizes Kafka to handle real-time event processing for trip data, location tracking, and communication between their microservices. And some of the core advantages of, of Kafka is its high throughput and low latency. So Kafka can process millions of messages per second with minimal delay. Its scalability, so its partition log model, allows for horizontal scaling by adding more brokers and partitions, and its durability and fault tolerance. So data replication across brokers ensures that the system can recover from failures without data loss. So to recap, Kafka is a powerful distributed event streaming platform that handles high volumes of data with ease. Its architecture of producers, brokers, topics, partitions, and consumers enables efficient and scalable real-time data processing. The fundamental strength of Kafka lies in its ability to decouple data streams and process them in parallel, providing both reliability and speed. I hope this was a clear explanation of how Kafka works. If you want more in-depth technical solutions, make sure to like and subscribe and tell a friend. It helps the channel out a lot. And also don't forget to check out techprep.out if you're preparing for your technical interviews. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.